ladies and gentlemen, the quarter finals are here. It's board draw, and we're here to give you a little preview and prediction for the four quarterfinal games of Euro 2024. I'm sad. The group stage absolutely sped by, and the round of 16 has gone even quicker. And we're into like the final, what, like 11 games? And we've got some colossal games now. Oh, mate. No, we've got, we've got less than that now. We've got seven games left. <laughs> Yeah. Four quarterfinals, two, two semi-finals. Two, yeah. That's sad. It is the end is nigh. But, but the games are exciting. I mean, just looking at those quarterfinal games, it is stacked. Big teams facing off each other. I mean, two giants minimum are going home in the quarterfinals. England did so well. And I know England's side of the draw isn't like Easy. It's there are not, some there big are no sides, easy sides, but, but that bloody left hand side of Portugal, Spain, France, and Germany. Germany. Jesus Christ! There are some absolute clashes there. We'll start with Spain versus Germany because that is, they're the two best teams in the tournament. Two best teams in the tournament and has all the makings of although, the game of the tournament. Although, I'm, I'm I want to say this. Say it. Germany obviously battered Scotland in the first game. Mm. Then they were good against Hungary. Yeah. And then they were okay against Switzerland. Mm. And then they were okay against Denmark. They did, they weren't fantastic, I don't think. Yeah. And they were fortunate, in my opinion, to get past Denmark. I think Denmark would have done harsh by VAR. Yeah. But I think they are just a force to be reckoned with. Musiala, Florian Wirtz. I mean, um, Nagelsmann making big calls, leaving Wirtz out against Denmark. Is that something Gareth Southgate should be doing with Jude or Phil? Well, we'll talk about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, Germany just have all the tools there to succeed. But they're coming up against probably the most impressive team in the tournament so far. Spain's ability to dominate the ball, but also create chances is ridiculous. They're not they're not that, vert, uh, that horizontal passing team anymore. They're not going to have 90% possession, but they make their possession count now. Agreed. I think, yeah, they're so exciting and... Obviously, everyone was talking about Yamal going into this tournament, and I think he's been excellent. But Nico Williams. Unbelievable. But Lug Clark, he is so sick. He's so good, isn't he? And yeah, I saw a debate, and maybe we'll put it out here and I'll put it out on socials. Who are you taking? Williams and Yamal or Verts and Musiala? Verts and Musiala for me. I think I think I'd take is better Yam- than all of them. Oh, and he thought he got dropped as well. That's yeah, but, but he was dropped to fit the system. Mm. But I think I'd take um, Williams and Yamal, and I think I'd take them because they are. It is different. Though. You're comparing I, like two tens. Yeah, I'm a bit more like um, turned on by like wingers that hug, hug the touchline yeah. and play wide, whereas Musiala and Verts are more inverted. I think they're the more technicians, two. aren't they? Yeah, they're yeah. But Wait. let us know in the comments who you take out of those two. But yeah, let's talk about Spain versus Germany. We've got a Spain team that, like you said. High attacking football now, quick. Like you said, they're not kind of tiki taka hold the ball, 80% possession anymore. But what they've got is Rodri at the base. Fabio, Fabio Ruiz, who I think is having a really good he, tournament. He's got to be in team of the tournament so far. He's, I think he's fantastic. absolutely balling out. And then, like you said, um, the wingers who are going crazy. So I think even Morata is so undervalued in this team. Mm. I think his ability to make off the ball runs to create space is so underrated. Exactly the same as Kai Verts. They, they yeah. kind of similar ilk strikers where yeah. probably not the most clinical guys, but up top they they're facilitate not gonna, they're not movement. They're going to get you twenty goals a season. Oh no, they will probably but, make you tear your hair out more often than not. But you notice when they're not there, and they'll facilitate runs for everybody else. And yeah, I, selfless I, strikers, which yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. As well as the Musiala, Verts, um, Williams, Yamal Who are you taking? Kai Verts or Morata? Yeah, that's a close one. I'll, you put me on the spot. Yeah, I think I'd take Kai Verts. I really like Morata, but I find it hard to look past Havertz. He's had a really good tournament as well, Kai. Yeah. Um, yeah I mean, th- these two teams are stacked all over the field. I mean, in goal, they've got some great options. Mm. Um, and then. It's kind of hard to pick the differences between them because they've both been really good. And I can't really think of any major weaknesses. Maybe fullbacks of both teams aren't great. Yeah, you've you got like Danny Carvajal and Cucurello. Cucurello's actually had quite well, a good tournament. Yeah, he's been all right. But I'm not inspired by either of those. And then you've got, um, for Germany, you've got Raum, who came in last game instead of Middlestat. And then obviously, La- um, not fucking Lam, Joshua Kimmich is quality. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know, maybe we'll the fullback area. We'll be doing uh, a combined 11 overall TikTok, so head over to check that out to see who we picked. 
Um, but yeah, this game is going to go off. It's the perfect way to kick off the quarterfinals. And we're going to see probably one of the tournament favourites I was going to say, it's almost sad that this isn't the final, this, but it is what it is. This After the group stages, this is these are the two best teams in the, in the game, in the tournament. Um, and yeah, I just think there's just so much going around. I don't know if Spain... We'll be able to uh, th- like this is the real test for both these teams. I think whoever wins this has a good chance of going on and winning the whole thing. Yeah, but it's it's difficult because Spain weren't really tested by Croatia. They weren't really tested by Italy, and weren't really tested by Albania or Georgia. No, in Germany they played against Scotland, who were maybe the worst team in the tournament. Yeah, and um, they played against a very lacklustre Hungary, who never, didn't really offer anything going forward, mm. and they played against a good Switzerland team. Yeah. But they came out on top. And Dec- but they were losing. They were losing Denmark for like 90 good, minutes yeah. of that game. Yeah, yeah. And they were fortunate to get past Denmark. So the, this is a real test. This is the first big, big test for both of these I teams. I think I'm leaning towards Germany. I'm thinking over it now. I think the German, like you said, the German side have had probably a few more tests than Spain. And they've come up strong. I really like the back two of... Rudiger and Tara, Rudiger and Schlotterbeck. Rudiger's just been fantastic. Rudiger's an absolute monster. I like that a little bit more than, um, who would it be, Laporte and Le Normand. Yeah, yeah. I think I prefer the German back line a bit more. So, but yeah, leaning towards them a little bit, I maybe. I think Nagelsmann has got this Germany team playing so well. And obviously yeah. they've got home advantage, which I think does account for a lot. Um, but yeah, it'll be it's going to be such a good game. It's going to be tight. We do score predictions at the yeah. end. Actually, no, let's do it now. Let's do it now. Um, I'm going for a tight 2-1 Germany. I'm going to go for a 1-all Germany to win on penalties. Sometimes I forget that's even an option, but I like that. Yeah. And like Luke said, make sure you check out our TikTok for our combined 11, because as he mentioned that, I was kind of thinking, oh, who would I play where? It's going to be tight. That's They've got a, that so many bowlers. Difficult one. And it doesn't get any easier when we move on to our next quarterfinal. Mate, France versus Portugal. Mbappe versus the big baby. His idol. Ronaldo. His idol, Ronaldo. I mean... Let's talk about Portugal and their kind of... Oh. Well, actually, both of them had kind of unimpressive um, round of 16 ties, but we'll talk about Portugal first. Penalty shootout, it took them. Yeah, that is... I mean, England failed to score against Slovenia, mm. but Portugal. Yeah, you still in made a round it, of sixteen made like game, even amount of firepower. But yeah, I think uh, Portugal's biggest problem, and we did a TikTok about this. Got some hate from Ronaldo, cuck boys, um, come at me. But um, their biggest problem is Ronaldo. He's yeah. obviously still an asset. He's making good runs. I've actually been Mate, semi-impressed with him his, this tournament up until that last game. where His runs off the ball are incredible. Yeah, so he's, good. He's so good at drawing the defender one way yeah. and then making the space for himself. And he's obviously lost a little bit of that um, that aerial prowess, mm. but he's like 57 years old. Mm. He's obviously lost a little bit of pace. His ball control, I think, leaves a lot to be desired now. But he's still a threat. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's still like an asset so to have many in this time, chances uh, in for this himself. Team. And he always ha- and he always will because he's just so switched on. Yeah. But he needs to fucking take a step back. He shouldn't be playing 120 minutes. After the game he had, where he had about 17 free kicks, someone has got, even like the manager's got to come up to him. But the manager won't because the manager probably absolutely sucks the farts out of his bum because he, he, he just is, runs the joint. You know how like, Mbappe ran PSG. Yeah. He runs uh, Portuguese yeah. national team. But someone's got to say, but, mate. mate, if I turn around you and I see a geezer who's won like 200 Ballon d'Ors, yeah. he's won countless Champions Leagues and he's crying because he missed the penalty. Mate, get yourself in the... That is so fucking embarrassing. It's wet. It's so embarrassing. And he's meant to be the leader of that team. He's been through everything football has to throw at you and he's crying because he missed the penalty against Slovenia, mate. I know uh, he's so desperate to score so he's calling <laughs> six euros in a row it, yeah. that he... He's throwing Portugal's chances of getting yeah. of, of winning this entire thing under the bus because I've been so impressed with them. Yeah, so so impressed. I mean, some of the balls that Bernardo Silva was putting in, fantastic. I think um, who's the the left uh, left back they played Mendes. Yeah, I oh, so good. Nuno, Men- Nuno oh, Mendes. Oh my god, so good, so fucking good. He's been unbelievable. So fast, he, strong. Mate, he is, and he's so good with the ball. Yeah, his mate, feet. He's sick. I think he's been my stand-up defender of this tournament. Yeah, I really like him. Um, 
fantastic. And just even the midfield, Vitinha has been Vitinha, so impressive. Turkey. So impressive. Uh, I even like Rafael Leal. I, I think he is... There are so, few players who are so good at beating a man. He is like in the transition to get you up the pitch with the ball at his feet. He's probably one of the best in the world. He reminds me of like Adama Traore, but with more tech. Yeah. I mean, there was a point where he was juggling the ball past uh, the Slovenian yeah. right back and the Slovenian right back just like grabbed the ball. My favourite clip was where he's like sprinting with the ball at his feet. But he's like not even, he's not even sprinting. He's got a light jog with a smile on his face. Yeah. But the guy behind him is like busting a gut to keep up. And he's, he's just so, so naturally good. quick. I Sick. mean, I put, I put a bet on <laughs> for him to win two fouls and the defender, the right back to commit two fouls nice. and get a yellow card. And it came in within about 10 minutes. Yeah, no. He Free is a, money. Yeah, he's a disgrace. He's so good. But his final third decision making could leave a bit to be desired. Yeah, I, but the problem is, who do you bring in really for that left wing role? I mean, Jota. Jota, yeah. I mean, Jao Felix even as well. Pedro Neto. Pedro Neto. I just think he does it a bit better than all of them. Yeah, but maybe not the final third. I'd say Jota but, and Neto probably got a better final third than him. If you're getting the ball up there and then you can play it off to Bruno Fernandes or like yeah. Bernardo Silva, it's fantastic. I mean, they're just so good all around. All right, let's talk about L'Equipe de France. Oh, man. So, They've on one nil the- stinker against Belgium. They've had weren't impressive. a fairly stinky tournament. I know um, L'Equipe and... Um, the so they French haven't media, scored a goal from open play yet? No, the French media have been Which hounding to Champs for saying he's too defensive. And So what was he I mean, <laughs> I mean what, look at what England have been saying. So this uh, the game against Belgium, he played Schoemeni, Kante and Rabiot with Griezmann in front. And they then... had Griezmann on right wing. They yeah, had Turam yeah. up top and Turam Mbappe and on the Mbappe, left. Yeah. And Mbappe, obviously, after his nose injury... He's wearing a mask. He looks afraid to get involved. He yeah. looks really afraid to get involved. Um, but but yeah, what France have got is like probably the best back line. They, at the they are the quintessential. They're like the Real Madrid of international competition. They are a moments team. Mm. They might not always play the best football. They might not. And even when they've won uh, tournaments in the past or got to finals, they haven't even always played the best one. They, they haven't even been the best team in games. But constantly they find a way. Yeah. They are moments and they've got such talent in the team that there's no surprise. I think uh, Hernandez has been fantastic at left back. Mike so Magnon is maybe the best goalkeeper in the tournament. Some of the saves he's been pulling out, fantastic. Mm. Um, Saliba is definitely Saliba, the best centre-back Saliba, in the tournament. phenomenal. Uh, partnered by Uber Meccano. Good. Really good. I mean, they are just solid. They've got Kante who just... He's played in Saudi Arabia, yeah? Have you seen and his he, abs? Mate, my guy's got naughty. He, and he's still the best DM in the world. Yeah, he's, mate, he's crazy. outrageous. He is crazy. He's so good. He's, come, he's everywhere. So, and, oh, mate, he's just so good. I'm still not sold on Rabiot. I don't really know how this Donny keeps getting into the I team. I don't know. I feel like he facilitates the France system quite well. But I would just think, like, you play Kante and Schumeni. Get and then just play Griezmann in the front. Or, and then you can play, like, Dembele. Yeah. Um... I want to see Kamavinga getting this team. I think, he, yeah, I think he needs to be playing. Yeah, but I really like Schumeni as well. Yeah. I like the fact he's so brave. He takes shots from outside the box all the time. So you don't see in football now. Well, that's how he scored against England um, at the World Cup. Yeah, so for me, France, they, they are just too good to count out. But, but I have been... They have been underwhelming. We're like Spain and Germany are the best teams in the tournament so far and have had like good performances to go with it. Portugal and France... We're probably like, well, my favourite, your favourite, but, and are good teams, but really haven't had like any wow performances. And they're coming no, up against I each other. I think Portugal are good against, was it Turkey? Turkey. Yeah. But, yeah. And, but you would expect it, I think, that, that sort of match up. But yeah, France have been a little bit underwhelming, but teams are often going to win tournaments, especially like the Euros. They, they tend to find their form in the knockout rounds. Yeah, I think this will be a game, like a low scoring game of moments. It'll be like, will Mbappe have a moment? Will uh, Ronaldo have his moment? It'll be one of those guys will come up. Bruno Fernandes will do something yeah, crazy. It's going to be, and Griezmann. it's going to be just a uh, phenomenal watch. And- Whereas like the Spain Germany game, you watch it for the good football, um, exciting players. And there'll probably be like goals, nice pat- passages of play. Mm. This will be, I think a bit of a stink fest with a couple of highlight moments from the big dogs agreed right prediction I'm going for I, I was leaning towards Portugal I was about to say I'm going 4-0 <laughs> yeah, I was leaning towards Portugal because I've got them on my bets I've got them in the, the old uh, sweepstake but I don't know how much I trust them after that whole Ronaldo Palava but Bruno Fernandes uh, he's, yeah, Bruno's, he is that guy uh, Br- Bernardo Silva I'm going 1-1 one, one, 
penalties, France win it. Ronaldo. Oh, actually, no. Ronaldo misses. W- one one. I mean, Diogo Costa just penalties. Three. Portugal win it because Diogo Costa is an absolute freak at saving pens. But Mike Manuel's not even really been tested yet. No, no. Yeah, one one. Portugal win on pens. One one. The penalties never end. I just like kept, it. Get, keep getting saved. Yeah. Portugal pens. Portugal pens for you. I'm gonna go with a three one France. Wee oui, wee. Oui. I think that they will find their feet and show everyone the right why time. they are not to be trifled with. Yeah. I think Portugal against everyone they've played so far, they have been allowed to come out and not really worry about defending. We saw Georgia absolutely murder absolutely them, punish yeah. them for it. We saw um who else scored? Was it um, Czechia scored against them as yeah. well on the counter? Even Sesco had hella chances. Yes. Yeah. Um, Jao Cancelo is interested in doing any defending. Pepe, we saw, has been giving away chances. He's played like 90, 90, 90, 120. He's played so much football mm. and he's he's old as well, mate. He's, I don't know. I think there's mistakes in there. Um, yeah, yeah, and Bruno Menge wants to get up the uh, Nuno Menge wants to get up the pitch as well. Vitinha's not the most defensive midfielder. I think there's going to be a lot of chances for France this game, and I think they're going to be fucking clinical. One-one Portugal and pens. Three-one France. Right up next, we've got England Switzerland, which we're going to talk about in a separate video, as always. So if you want to check out our England Switzerland preview, check out our video coming out the day after this one. Indeed. And to round off the quarterfinals, we have the Netherlands versus Turkey. Come on. What a result for Turkey the other night. Um, should we start on them? Because I quite like yeah. what Turkey are doing, you know. They were yeah. underdogs. Everyone kind of... We were rimming Aust- Austria. As dark horses, uh, one to watch. They could go all the way, blah, blah, blah. Turkey outplayed them this game. Yeah, I, Turkey were really I was good. so impressed with Austria coming out of the group stages. Yeah. And I really thought that this was a bit of a buy for them into the yeah, quarterfinals. Yeah, um, And I was really disappointed to see them go out because I, I was loving to watch them play. But Turkey did exactly what they needed to do. They were disruptive. They dominated the ball from early. Yeah, they um, just came out of the box. Obviously, the goal immediately helped. Mm. And then... They followed it up with yeah, the same Yeah, they, they didn't really about, kick on uh, Austria for a bit. Turkey got the second and then Austria put the pressure on. But at that point, Turkey were really good at just sitting deep. Fucking their centre-backs so the just heading out everything. Yeah, really good performance. Yeah, they were fantastic. I mean, what a save from the goalkeeper right at the end. Baumgartner getting on his head on the end yeah. of the cross. And it's such, it, it, Gordon Banks-esque, it's been called. Oh, mate, it's nuts. It yeah. doesn't do it justice, really. I think it was fantastic. Um, and the celebrations were fantastic. What a community. They've got a big, um, there's a big, community of Turkish people in Germany I often get, get mistaken for Turkish and as Italy have absolutely shambalised this tournament maybe I'll just back the I Turks. can't wait to see my barber tomorrow he's going to be buzzing <laughs> come on I'm going to see if he did me a saw, discount and this guy on Twitter was like I've gone to the barber with um, a Turkish shirt that says Arda Gula on the back I'm expecting the best haircut of my life <laughs> I mean they were just fantastic and it's, it's great to see there was a lot of controversy about this actually because of German television didn't show this on free to view. Oh, it was o- it was only on a rare stream for a paid to watch channel. Mate, get politics out of football, mate. Just ridiculous, oh, ridiculous. Um, but yeah, I think they're going to be fantastic. Turkey Germany final. The scenes. I just am a little bit worried. I think they gave a lot of that game. They did, and I think you can often see it where teams. They'll come and they'll they'll have a, a massive performance, and s- sometimes that m- momentum, that sort of like mm. the massive high, it's impossible to keep at that level. Yeah. And then just and if they, they get off to a rocky start against the Netherlands, it could all come crashing down really quickly. We'll talk about Netherlands in a second, but I think Netherlands is a good tie for them to get because it's I, not like yeah. stupidly hard. It's winnable. Like it's kind of on the level with Austria where. Turkey I mean, are probably Turkey, Austria, un- and Austria beat Netherlands, so exactly. So it's like kind of Turkey were the underdogs for the Austria game. They'll be the underdogs of this game, but they won't like bat an eyelid at being the underdogs. They probably prefer that. No, exactly. And what Turkey have got is they've got players coming back this game. They had like so many suspensions last game. Chalanoglu didn't play, so he'll mm. be back. And I'll talk about Arda Gula. He was so good against um, fucking I'm Austria. Just, I'm a bit pissed off that Real Madrid have all this talent. Oh, mate, they got like, like, an absolute We should monopoly. disband Real Madrid and just disperse these players amongst... Chelsea are trying to do what Real Madrid are doing, but they're just buying shit teams. <laughs> Real Madrid yeah. have got all the good they're ones and just awful. give all like, the shit ones to Chelsea. But yeah, Arda Gula, just the way he would like... The whole team is like defending kind of for their lives. Will like 
buy out clearances, not really thinking about what they're doing apart from keeping the ball out of the net. He is like obviously 19 years old, way beyond his years. So good. Just take the ball, have about four players around him, just find a way out, relieve pressure all the time, make the right passes. Mate, he, yeah, if he plays as like you got, I think he got man of the match last game against Austria. So, or maybe it was a goalkeeper in the end. But um, yeah, if he has like another eight or nine out of ten performance, there's no reason they can't do it. There's no reason they can't do um, it. The Netherlands pretty convincingly trumped uh, Romania. I mean, Romania came out and started well. I thought this could be a bit of an upset, but yeah. after a while, they took their foot off the gas and the Netherlands sort of just grew into the game. Cody Gakpo, I mean, he's just, he's so good at tournaments. Yeah, he's kind of scary when he puts on the Netherlands. I top, think you, know? you weren't really sold No, I him. think he's shit, but, but maybe it's because I only watch him for Liverpool, but yeah, tournament I mean, Cody Gakpo goes hard. Ryan was in the midfield, had a really good game. Yeah, both of them, him and, and that Jody Shelton as well were good. But after a while, like the players that you, you're hoping from a Romania, like Stanchu and Marin, who... who you would expect to give them a bit of a hard time. They, they, they yeah, really everything they were doing bit. was kind of like good. Like you could see the effort was there from Romania, but they just kind of they, just weren't, that, get, they weren't just getting in there. They weren't that making that chance pass. fall. But yeah, like the chances didn't fall for them properly and stuff. And like we said, Netherlands were clinical and brought on Donya Marlin in the second half. He yeah, was really good. Really and good stuff from Koeman. Yeah, they were good. I, it was what I, we were expecting from them. They should win that game. Netherlands are a good side. They haven't, like we said, haven't been super impressive, but they they're a good side they should be getting past Romania and Turkey is a good kind of another litmus test for them are they good enough to after getting through Turkey then they can take on the big boys the the, the knockout Germany's games are always different from the group games because the group games you always have that a bit of a leeway I mean they won their uh, they beat Poland in the first game hmm. so they knew that they were all but through and then Drew against France so Drew against France actually... and then that last game which was Austria it was just a battle for it so you, you wanted it more yeah. and Austria did but now the knockout stage there's nowhere to hide there's, yeah. no, there's no second chances now. And I think that's what's going to push them, fuel them through. And I think now they've got a bit of confidence that they can score goals. They found sort of the, their, their, their best 11, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think I so. I think De Vries had a much better game than he did against Austria. Mm. Um, and yeah, I, I think Dumfries as well, which is really important to them. I think there's all those players on that pitch serve a purpose, but they can be got at. Yeah, I think, I think can, quite an open game. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. Prediction? Yes, like I said, open game. I'm going to go ooh, 2-2 and then maybe a Dutch extra time winner. I'm going to go 1-0 Netherlands. Oh, stinky. I think Turkey going to sit deep and hit on the counter. I think Netherlands aren't as clinical as we'd want them to be. No. I mean, a lot of their goals have just been A lot of chances. They missed finishes. a lot of chances yeah. in that um, Romania game. Area. Yeah, like I saw Depay had a few that he missed. Yeah. Xavi Simons had a few that he missed. They're not the most clinical teams, but a bit of magic. And I think 1-0 Netherlands in the 90s. Yeah, I like that. I like that. And then we're into the semis. Will England be there? Let us know. Let us know your predictions to all four quarterfinal fixtures in the comments down below. Yeah, if you want to head over to our TikTok, we'll be doing some combined 11s and chucking out a bunch of other content. And if you do want to uh, find out what we've predicted for England and a little bit of a preview for the Switzerland game, head on over to the next video. It'll be going uh, up the day after this, uh, where we'll be going through the England-Switzerland game in much more detail. But guys, thank you very much for watching. It's been Board Draw. The quarterfinals are here, baby. And it's live.